In the last video, we put together several parts of the, the toolbox that we need to analyze general equilibrium graphically. So we have two market participants. We have the Edgeworth box that shows us what are the feasible consumption plans. We have both people's endowments. We have their preferences. And that's all in this Edgeworth box that you can see here. Um, and we also derived what the budget constraint looks like. And we said that the budget constraint has to go through the endowment point because no one can consume more than what the value of their endowment is. And the slope of it, of that budget constraint, is the ratio of the two prices, minus P1 over P2. Now we've also seen in this graph that at that price ratio where good one appears to be relatively cheap and good two appears to be relatively expensive, we have a situation where, the, where both market participants demand too much of good one. So they demand in total more than what is actually available and they demand too little of good two. You can see the excess demand for good one um, here and here. So here and here you can see the excess demand of good one. You can also see um, a gap in the demand for good two if you draw a straight line over here. And, and you can see basically that there is a shortfall of demand or you can also say there is excess supply of good two. Yeah. So we have two goods, we have two prices, and at those prices, people demand too much of one and too little of another. So the next step is to think, well, what has to happen to bring both of those into equilibrium, as in to have zero excess demand for one good and zero excess demand for the other? or zero excess supply and zero excess supply for good one, for good two. Mm. Um, so that's the equilibrium condition that, that, that we're, 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 we're trying to, 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 to get at. Right? So, so in equilibrium, supply must equal demand. And what has to happen is that the prices in that economy will have to adjust. Um, and, and it's also fairly intuitive what has to happen, right? So the price of good one seems to be too low. There is too much demand. So the price for that good will have to rise. And at the same time, uh, the, the, there is supply exceeds demand for good two. So the relative price for good two has to fall. Right, that, that's just the, 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 the logic of supply and demand in those markets. Yeah? If there is excess demand, then simply uh, suppliers can charge more and that should drive up the price. If there is excess supply, then suppliers are charging too much and they, they can only sell enough goods if they, uh, if, if they actually charge less. Right? So prices will adjust to bring this market into equilibrium or to bring actually those two markets simultaneously into equilibrium. Now, what that means graphically is that the budget line pivots around the endowment point. Right? So we have the initial budget line, I'm going to call it BC1 um, here. And uh, remember the slope was minus P1 over P2. So now if P1 goes up and P2 goes down, we see this line pivot and we reach then BC2. Now at BC2, we reach a different consumption point. And now you can see that the consumption point for both parties coincides. So the optimal uh, the level of utility 
that they both get is the same, right? So, so they may not get the same level of utility, but at that point, with those prices, the utility for each party is maximized. Okay, at that with that budget constraint, the highest indifference curve that Betty can reach is is this one here with those prices and the endowments, the highest indifference curve that Andrew can reach is here. Okay, and very importantly, the two of them are tangential to one another. Right? So what does what does that mean? Um, at that point, let's call this X, at that point X, there is no further gains from trade. If you remember, we had in one of the last videos, this this lens whereby th that, that, that is defined by the indifference curve of curves of both. So if we are in a consumption point that is that is somewhere down here, um, then obviously we could move with, through trade into this lens and make at least one, if not both parties better off. But at the point X, the blue point here, there is no further gains from trade. And also you, you can see here that um, Let's look at good good one here. So good one is exactly split, not 50-50, but it's split between both people and there is no excess demand or supply. The same goes for, uh, for good two. So um, Betty gets that much of good two, Andrew gets that much of good too. It's not split 50-50, doesn't have to be, but there is no excess supply or demand. And so both markets are simultaneously in equilibrium. And they moved into equilibrium from this initial budget constraint where one good was too cheap for the demands that both people have. So that it was too cheap given the preferences of both people. And the other one was relatively too expensive. And so, the, so by changing the prices, by, by prices adjusting um, and that budget constraint pivoting, we actually get to a, a new equilibrium or to, we get to an equilibrium whereby supply equals demand in each market. Now, I'm well aware that economists, economies do not only consist of two people, there is production typically, uh, people save, people take out loans, there may be many, many goods and so on. Um, and actually there are mathematical tools, no longer can we look at this graphically, but there are mathematical tools to analyze markets in general equilibrium for many goods, many participants, um, participants who, market participants who may uh, save for their pension, um, market participants who, who want to pass on some of their wealth to the next generation and so on. All this can be analyzed through mathematical tools in general equilibrium. At the undergraduate level, we will leave it at that and just, just look at it graphically in this two by two case. So two people, two goods. Hmm? And already a lot of the intuition can be conveyed through that. So, so once again, here we have a point of market equilibrium where the two indifference curves and the, uh, and the, the budget constraint are exactly tangential. Right? This may not be drawn exactly here on this slide, but, but mathematically they are. Right? So, so, so the point the consumption point, the blue point here at that point, the slope of both indifference curves is the same as is the slope of the budget constraint. So it means that simultaneously at that point, given the prices and given preferences, the utility of Andrew 
and Betty is maximized at the same time and we have supply equaling demand in either market. Now here is just a word of, of, of warning and, and maybe an outlook to what, what a lot of economists are struggling with. Um, and one of the things is, is the following that in many cases, you know, even if you assume that utility functions are what we call well behaved, you can actually get to multiple equilibria. Okay, so you, you can find multiple price vectors. So how much is the price of good one and of good two? That's called the price vector here. You can find multiple price vectors for which the indifference curves have the same slope as the budget constraint. That's something that goes way beyond what undergraduate uh, economics should should teach, but I felt it's it's important to just mention this here, because this this is something that even in this very highly stylized economy, in, in plain and simple things can easily get pretty um, pretty messy. So what economists typically do then is. They say, well, you know, how plausible are some of these equilibria? So is an equilibrium that is somewhere out here, um, out here, is that particularly plausible, yes or no? And if, 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 if the answer is no, then we'll simply exclude it from the set of all possible equilibria. Or we actually have to make assumptions that are more restrictive. So, so this, this is just an outlook of what can happen, um, but this is not something that you need to wrap your head around um, in, in an undergraduate course. If you do a PhD in economics, you will think, have to think a lot about the so-called uniqueness of equilibria and all the things that can go wrong if you have multiple equilibria.